Yosemite National Park has been made popular by photographers like Ansel Adams, and it's been one of those places in the world that photographers have dreamed of going or do end up going. So in this video, I'm going to give you five important tips on making your trip to Yosemite and making sure that you get the shots that you need. So Yosemite National Park is one of the greatest places to take photographs. It's one of those places where almost anywhere you look, there's a great photograph to take. Um, but the difficult part of going to Yosemite isn't necessarily taking the photographs, it's just actually getting there in general. Um, so I'm gonna go over a few tips right here um, to really help change your trip from something that could be a disaster into something that will be a successful photo trip or even just a trip in general because these kind of apply to everybody that goes. So my first tip is decide the season that you want to go. Now, Yosemite, while it does have all four seasons, I would really say there's only kind of two main seasons because fall, there's a lot of evergreen trees there, so you don't really get any of the fall colors. And then spring and summer are pretty similar as well. Um, I would say that the two main seasons that you really want to focus on are either the winter or the non-winter months. And the winter months, clearly it's in the Sierras and it's gonna have a lot of snow. I've spent um, a few days there in the winter after um, a blizzard and there's tons of snow in the valley and it kind of sticks around for a while. Now, I'm sure you've seen photographs of Yosemite. I'm sure you've seen what you like. So, I mean, you could either go for the snow or you could go for not the snow. You know, just the regular uh, pictures of Yosemite. Um, now, both are good choices. Um, I've never been disappointed going to Yosemite. So, you know, just keep in mind, do you want to go during the winter or during the summer type months, which are also the most crowded. Um, summer season is Yosemite's uh, peak season. So a lot of the tourists are there. So you're going to have some problems kind of finding lodging to actually stay there. So that will lead me to tip number two, and that is to book in advance. I would say book it as soon as possible. As soon as you think about going, book the room. And I'm not kidding and I'm not exaggerating about this. Um, book like six months in advance. Um, I was checking the campsites today just to um, make this video and it's pretty amazing because right now I'm filming this video in the beginning of June and the campsites are, are almost completely booked up until October. And that's, like I said, the most busy month for Yosemite. So, um, you know, you can imagine all the other places for lodging in the area. Um, now, there's kind of two worlds of lodging in Yosemite. There's the camping and then there's the hotel. Now, that's gonna depend on your comfort level. I personally don't really like camping very much. Um, I would prefer to stay in a hotel. Um, however, I'm still really cheap and I don't like spending a lot of money. And if you wanted to get a hotel room in Yosemite Valley, you're looking at like $600 a night. $600 a night for running water in an old hotel in the valley. So I would say for most of the people out there, that's way, way too much. But there are other, um, other places you can go. Now, there's like a little town um, just to the west of Yosemite, a few miles outside the gate, and it's called El Portal or El Portal, I, I don't know. And, but I've stayed there before and there's some good, um, there's some good choices there for lodging. I don't really know what the prices are, but it's outside of the valley, so you're gonna get a lot lower price. Now, when I stayed in the summer, and this is what I would highly, highly recommend, I'll link this in the, in the description. It's a hotel I stayed at um, and it's scenicwonders.com in Yosemite. So. Um, right now, they have rooms for as low as 179 a night, and these rooms are fantastic. They've got a kitchen so you can cook your own food, even a little barbecue, fireplace, TV. Um, they have two full bathrooms, and they've got an upstairs area where it has a bed, and then a downstairs area where it's got a couch that folds out into a bed. So you can sleep 
probably anywhere from four to six people comfortably in this room. So if you're looking to split this between, you know, four or five people, you know, you're looking at, you know, 50 bucks a night, not too bad. And it's very comfortable. And this will kind of lead into my next piece, which is Yosemite is huge. Now, there's three main parts in Yosemite. There's the valley, which is like the lowest part where you're kind of like looking up at the, the rock cliffs. The second part is um, Glacier Point, which is a road that runs along the southern rim of the valley. And then there's Mariposa Grove, which is um, the grove of trees where it's the huge sequoia trees. It's really cool. However, it's closed right now. So if you're planning a trip out there, I would say at least be wary that it may be closed. I don't know when it's gonna open again. I think it's very soon, but I'd say check before you waste your time driving out there because it's a long drive, like 45 minutes. Um, and it would be a bummer to waste, you know, 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back. Um, now it can take a long time to reach each spot. So let's say you're down in the valley and you wanna go up to Glacier Point. You know, you're looking at like an hour and a half drive. So, um, you know, you wanna take this stuff into consideration and maybe not do a lot of back and forth between Glacier Point, the valley, the valley, Glacier Point, um, which is actually one reason why the place that I stayed at, um, the Scenic Wonders, why it was really cool because it was actually at the midway point between Glacier Point up on the rim and the valley below. So, you know, it was like a half hour to the valley and like half hour, 45 minutes to um, the end of Glacier Point. Um, so that's another reason why I would recommend um, the Scenic Wonders uh, kind of hotel condo thing, um, just because it's nice to have a short drive in either direction. But um, just keep in mind that you're gonna wanna kind of keep these places separate day to day, you know, just because you're gonna be spending a lot of time driving if you're trying to go back and forth between these different parts of the park. Um, but this does lead me to point number four, which is to get up early and stay out late. Um, I'm sure it's not very difficult for a lot of you photographers to get the motivation to actually get out and shoot photos. Um, but just in case you need some extra motivation, there's a ton of places to shoot sunrise, you know, from the valley or even Glacier Point, and there's a ton of places to shoot sunset. Um, and not just that, but because Yosemite's up in the Sierras, like far away from any cities, the Milky Way is really great to, to photograph. Um, or even just the stars in general look really cool. Um, but you do need to uh, give yourself enough time to get all this stuff, which is tip number five, give yourself enough time. I would say that the ideal amount of days is three to five days. Clearly, I wish I could spend even more time there, but you are going to exhaust yourself out there. And you know, if you're waking up at you know, before sunrise every day and staying out till midnight every every night, um, it's gonna take a toll on you, especially with all the walking and hiking and carrying your gear, it's gonna be very difficult. Um, now, what I recommend to do is to actually spend one whole day in the valley. You know, just spend a whole day down there, get everything you need to get down there, go up to the Glacier Point, get everything you need to get up at Glacier Point, and then, you know, on the last day, the last day you stay there, go on the biggest hike that you want to go on to get the best photo you can get, whatever. Because, um, you know, like I said before, Yosemite is huge. Now I'm from San Diego and there's a lot of hiking out here. Um, but one thing about the hikes out here is, you know, you can pretty much get to the top of any place you're hiking to in about an hour. It's not very difficult. Um, so I kind of brought that mindset with me the first time I went out to Yosemite thinking, you know, uh, oh, these trails aren't gonna be very difficult. And so when I saw these, uh, these like trail markers saying that, you know, it was gonna be six, seven, eight hours to get up to the top of these trails, um, I didn't believe it because I'd never encountered something like that before. And I'll tell you what, I promise you, there are hikes there that will take you all day. Um, I went up to Nevada Falls one time, which is, I think, like an eight hour hike and it beat me, I'll really, I, it really beat me. Eight hours of hiking up, you know, steep switchbacks the whole way, and then coming down, it was the first time I ever actually felt knee pain. And that was at like 22 years old. It was incredibly difficult. And there's hikes that are longer than that. Like you wanna go up to Half Dome, 
that's a 12 hour hike. Now just think about like what 12 hours is. I mean, that's eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night, probably not even taking into account, you know, the time that you want to spend um, at the top of Half Dome. So, you know, you want to take this stuff into account when you're planning your days, you know, because you don't want to try to do your 12 hour hike the first day you're there because, you know, what if you have incredibly bad blisters on your feet and you're just, you're done for the rest of the time. But one place I would really, really recommend is uh, Glacier Point. Um, my reason being is that um, if you want to go on hikes, you know, you can pull over. There's a few places to pull over on the side of the road. And um, it's like a short one or two mile hike to some really cool viewpoints. Um, one of my favorites is Taft Point, which is like a two mile hike on flat ground and takes like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, it's an easy hike, but the payoff is huge. And then there, of course there's Glacier Point, which is the furthest point on the road there at Glacier Point. It's got a parking lot, tons of parking, um, and it's got some of the best views in the park. You know, you have a view of um, Half Dome, which is one of my favorite images. I'm showing it right here um, at, at night. And Anybody can reach that point. Even if you're in a wheelchair, they have paved trails going out to the edge of this viewpoint, which is like a half mile cliff down to the bottom of the valley. So it's a really cool place for anybody. I mean, you can bring your kids there, you can bring old people there, you can bring, you know, whatever. And then, you know, they have hikes up to that point, of course, if you want to take, you know, a six hour hike up there. But, um, you know, just plan these things out. Make sure you know where you're gonna go. Make sure you don't exhaust yourself beforehand. Um, now, I hope these five tips were helpful. Um, that's just kind of what I've learned from my multiple trips to Yosemite. And I think that Yosemite is one of the coolest places to go photograph. And I think everybody that goes really deserves to have a good time there. So, you know, just keep these things in mind if you're planning your trip and, you know, really make the most of your time while you're there. So all these tips together will really ensure that the time you spend is used wisely. So um, if you like this video, let me know in the comments down below, leave me a like or subscribe to the channel. Um, I try to come out with videos as often as I can. Um, and if you like these kind of, you know, travel tip videos, let me know. I've been to quite a few places in the US and I can, you know, at least give you some pointers on a few of the places I've been to. Um, so once again, thank you for watching the whole video and I will see you guys on the next one.